Lamborghini. It's probably the most evocative and characterful car company in the world. And it's the firm that created what's arguably considered the world's first ever supercar, the Mura. Now, Lamborghini thinks it has created the world's first super SUV, the Urus. It's designed to have the design and performance of Lamborghini's supercars, and yet have the practicality and ease of use of an SUV. But that is all marketing speak, quite frankly. What this is, is another SUV spun off the VW Group's large SUV platform that's already used for the Audi Q7 and Q8, Bentley Bentayga, and the Porsche Cayenne. But with 641 brake horsepower and in-your-face styling, the Urus is easily the mad uncle of the family. But not only that, it also has to double Lamborghini's sale figures. But what I want to know is, is the Urus a proper Lamborghini or is it some money-making exercise that's tarnishing the brand? But before I tell you that answer, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that little bell icon so you're notified exactly when one of our videos goes live. Right, let's confront the elephant in the room here, shall we? And that's the styling. Now, this has to be one of the most divisive cars I've ever driven. Some people give you a thumbs up, while others give you some other kind of hand gesture. But I think it looks how a Lamborghini SUV should look. I like its wedgy design, its pointy front end. However, I have to say, I think the rear end is a bit too fussy. And on this particular car, the filler cap doesn't fit properly. But what do you think to the design? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Inside, and you quickly get the impression there's an awful lot going on in here. There's the typical Lamborghini hexagon design. It all seems very, very busy. But when you stare a little bit closer, you realise there's a few things that are a little bit disappointing. The first is the build quality. Now, it's genuinely good in most places, but for a £165,000 car, the quality is lacking in certain areas, such as around this touchscreen. And these little bits here, they all move. It's a bit disappointing, really. And you also notice you've got these two screens here and they're taken straight out of the Audi A8. But whilst Lamborghini has changed the design of them a little bit, it's just the Audi system. Although that does mean you get a nice bit of haptic feedback when you press them. Just a little screen vibrates a little bit when you touch certain features. It's a really nice little touch. You've got a very angry looking rev counter in front of you, but everything else, it's just like an Audi TT. Now down here, Lamborghinis say this is the true spirit of a Lamborghini because you've got a start-stop button that's uh, only accessible if you flick up this red fighter button gate. But it actually feels quite plasticky. And then over here, you've got all your drive modes. Strada, Sport, Corsa, Sabia, Terra, Neve, 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 something like that but it's all designed to make this car feel Italian and flamboyant. But what it actually makes you feel is it's all unnecessary. It's just Lamborghini costume jewelry. Now, as this is a car bar review, I have to talk to you about storage and there is quite a lot of it. There are a couple of cup holders here, but they seem incredibly small. Under here, there's a place to put your mobile phone. It uh, charges your phone wirelessly and it boosts the signal on it. The door bins are very large. In actual fact, they're large enough for a two litre bottle of water. Look at that. And the glove box is absolutely enormous as well. You can fit the same two litre bottle of water in there. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention was the key. Now, it may well have a Lamborghini badge on it, but in actual fact, it's the same key you get on an Audi A6, a saloon car that costs £40,000. But really, none of this matters because this car has got two important things, the Lamborghini script over there and the badge in front of you. All of this Audi stuff really doesn't matter. The standard kit list is generous with 12-way electric front seats, full LED headlights, lane departure warning, adaptive suspension and carbon ceramic brakes. But with a myriad of different interior combinations from white leather seats to yellow seat belts and carbon fibre air vents, few Uruses will ever be identical.
Now for an SUV with such a sloping roof line, there's quite a lot of space back here. There's a good amount of headroom, tons and tons of knee room. I can put my feet under the seat in front of me and get a really comfortable position as well. Now as standard, the Urus comes uh, with five seats. You get a typical bench uh, rear seat, but you can spend £2,600 on getting the full seater version like we've got here. And you get this fixed centre console, there's a couple of cup holders, lots of uh, storage in this great big bin under here with a couple of USB charging ports as well. And you also get this very elaborately trimmed ski hatch, which is great uh, if you intend to take this car on your winter holidays. Now you can spend £3,600 on the rear seat entertainment pack, get a couple of touch screens. You can have rear blinds as well to prevent people from looking in on you if you so wish. But one thing I do have to say though is despite it being actually quite spacious back here, I do feel quite claustrophobic and that's, with, that's due to all the black trim, the, the uh, screens in front of me, the blind up. It reminds me of being in the Aston Martin Rapide. There's quite a bit of space, but it doesn't feel it. Along with that spacious interior, the boot is surprisingly large. It's about the same size as the Porsche Cayenne's boot. It's usually square, and thanks to air suspension coming as standard, you can lower the car to make loading a bit easier. But that's enough of the practicality. What we really want to know is, is the Urus a proper Lamborghini? <laughs>well, things sound good on paper. Under the pointy bonnet lies the same 4-litre twin-turbo V8 petrol engine from the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. But appropriately, there's more power and drama in the Urus. Now, when you first hop into this car, it does feel a little bit odd because not only are you sitting up very high, which is quite unusual in a Lamborghini, but there's no wonderful V10 engine under the bonnet or one of Lamborghini's mellifluous V12s. There's a twin turbo V8 and there's not the typical noise you associate with a Lamborghini. It's quite growly, quite bassy. There we go. One of Porsche's V8s there and yeah, it's not your typical Lamborghini experience but whilst it may not sound like a typical Lamborghini, by heck does it go like a Lamborghini. <laughs> It is stupendously fast, my goodness me. Now one thing you do notice is that this car redlines at around 6,800, just less than 7,000. And It's a bit disappointing if you're used to Lamborghinis, but what it makes up for though is earth-shattering torque. It kicks in at around 2,000 and oh, <laughs> you get this great big thump back there, you're th thrown back into the seat. It is an extraordinary experience. Whoa! <laughs> now, one thing I do like are the paddle shifters. Now, on an Audi, you tend to get little plasticky ones, but here, they're metal ones, and it really does make a big difference to, to the way this car feels, all the sensations that are going through your hands. Now, speaking of the gearbox, it's an eight-speeder automatic. The, the upshifts are pretty quick, actually, but the downshifts, come on, a little bit, come on, a little bit slow. Up, upshifts, lightning fast. Down, come on, it's a bit slow. But the big benefit to that, though, is that around town, this car is very smooth. You can potter around in this car in a way that no Lamborghini can. It's very refined and very impressive. Now we're in Strada mode at the moment. It's the default mode. It's your street, it's your standard normal mode. The ride is really good. The engine's quite muted. Steering's light, it's really good, but you can knock it up. Let's go to Corsa, shall we? Everything firms up and <laughs> everything firms up, everything's sharper. The uh, exhaust, you get these pops and these crackles. The suspension's stiffer, but it's still, it's still not too firm, actually. It's actually quite impressive. 
you've got your different driving modes as well. You've got sand and off-road and snow. The off-road modes, the air suspension's pumped up and you're probably going to want to go for smaller wheels with off-road tyres. And when you do that, this thing can go off-road quite well. It's not a Range Rover sort of mud plugging kind of car, but for most of the most of sort of light off-roading work, it's very good. Now to allow this car to go around corners in a very Lamborghini supercar-esque way, we've got four-wheel steering, but not only that, we've got active roll stability, we've got an active rear differential, and we've got torque vectoring, and it means this thing can go around corners in a way that defies physics. It is incredible to think this car weighs nearly two and a half tonnes and sits high up in the air. It is unbelievable. Now, yes, it may well be based on an Audi Q8 and a Porsche Cayenne, but Lamborghini's done an awful lot of work to this car and it really does show. It's a really impressive piece of kit. Now, it doesn't have the drama or the fear factor of Lamborghini supercars, but for an SUV, this is very hardcore and it feels every inch a super SUV. Now the big question we want to know is, is this a proper Lamborghini? Well, not in the traditional sense, but I have to say for an SUV, this does feel like a Lamborghini. It really does. They've done a huge amount of work and after a while, this thing really does get under your skin. And yes, it may not be your traditional purist Lamborghini, but if this car allows Lamborghini to carry on building V12 Aventadors and V10 Huracans, I don't really care, because Lamborghini thinks that they can double their sales figures of this car. So let's answer that question. Is the Urus a cynical moneymaker, or is it a proper Lamborghini? Well, there's no doubt it is a moneymaker. Lamborghini can sell these all day, every day, and make a big profit. But it's definitely not cynical, as the Urus is a very good car. It's a well-sorted, stunningly capable SUV that has enough Lamborghini DNA in it to make it authentic. Thanks for watching, and if you liked my video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, give my Bentley Bentayga review a watch and click our SUVs playlist.